I know people are going to see the title of this video and instantly think, man, this guy really must hate Pokemon. What a loser. I need to unsubscribe to this guy's channel. He's not a real Nintendo fan. But let me satiate you just a little bit. You see, I have a long history with the Pokemon franchise. I haven't really enjoyed the games in a long time. And to be frank, there have been some good Pokemon games over the years. There's also been some not so good ones over the years. And in general, the mainline Pokemon franchises has been just okay, right? For some of you, it's been wonderful, fantastic, and great. There's no IP franchise or character that is for everyone. Like Tears of the Kingdom is my favorite game of all time. For other people, they're not ha enjoying it as much. I understand. It's not going to be for everyone. It's not everyone's cup of tea. And the same is true with Pokemon. But what is happening with Scarlet and Violet is an utter embarrassment. Not just an embarrassment for the Pokemon Company, Game Freak, Nintendo. Just an embarrassment to us as video game fans. This is getting to the point now, after the most recent incident with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, I, I'm, I'm starting to worry that if games like Tears of the Kingdom didn't exist, that honestly this could be a overall reputation hurting thing for Nintendo. Nintendo has other reputation things going on with their online service and the way they go after ROM sites and yada, yada, yada. YouTubers, they go after YouTubers as well. So Nintendo already has like you know some bad reputation stuff they fight against. But having to throw in game quality as one is not one we want to deal with. So we need to talk about this in earnest, about this latest problem coming out of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and what it means moving forward for the IP. And before we do, I want to remind you that we are on our road to 133,000 subscribers. So I would appreciate if you go ahead and drop a like, hit the subscribe button. And you know what? We got it. We got to talk about Pokemon here. But first, I just want to remind you, I am chasing my dream. I'm turning 37 this year, which is as old as the Legend of Zelda series, believe it or not. So that's really cool. I'm, I'm just trying to chase my dream of being a full-timer here on YouTube, inspire my children to chase their dreams, and who knows, maybe inspire others. So I'd appreciate it if you just subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free to do. All right, let's get into this a little bit here. I am reading this off Destructoid because at this point, I don't even want to give the tweets clicks anymore. Of course, uh, you guys are free to do that because I'm, I'm just so upset by the situation. The title says, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet raid events canceled due to error. Here's what it says. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet have seen an absolute whirlwind of bug-related issues since launch. However, this past weekend may mark one of the lowest points for the games yet. Pokemon Home Integration was prematurely announced and then swiftly recalled. Yeah, another issue. With the note that support would be added, quote-unquote, soon. Then, within the same 24-hour period, dedicated Scarlet and Violet players found out that all Terra raid events scheduled for this weekend were completely pulled. Game Freak initially announced that trainers could face the Great Tusk and Iron Treads as an event Terra raid battles from May 19th to May 21st. These two would join the rerun event for the seven-star Chestnut, who first appeared on May 12th. However, players quickly reported rampant crashing issues after finishing these encounters. Subsequently, the Japanese Pokemon Twitter account announced the cancellation of the planned events within hours of their launch. We wouldn't see confirmation of this news from an official English source until roughly 13 hours later. It took 13 hours to translate a tweet? That's, that's just insane. No announcement cites the exact source of the crashing. However, players anecdotally shared that they received an item called None after fighting the Great Tusk or Iron Treads. Regardless of the cause, Game Freak pulled all three Terra raid events, including the Chestnut fight that previously was working just fine. The Pokemon Company has announced that any news regarding a rescheduling of these events will come at a later date. Now, this news frankly hits harder for those events than they might have otherwise. The Chestnut event initially launched alongside one of the biggest releases of this year. Naturally, many trainers hope to catch it during this rerun weekend instead. Additionally, 
Great Tusk, and Iron Treads, our version exclusive Pokemon. So having free reign to catch both was significant. As much of a bummer as it is to miss these events, it's even worse for people who caught game crashes instead of any new monsters. The bug-ridden state of Scarlet and Violet was bad enough at launch. However, snafus like these indicate a shocking lack of care for the highest grossing media franchise in the world. Glitches and performance issues haven't been meaningfully addressed in the game, yet Terra Raids proved to be a vehicle for more bugs to enter the game's ecosystem. The fact that the errors with this raid seem obvious indicates a dire state of affairs. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet feature genuinely great ideas that push the series forward in exciting directions. Fans deserve to see those ideas fully realized, instead of needing to dig through unpolished messes just to find them. The Pokemon Company has yet to announce any Terra Raid events for the weekend of May 26th to the 28th. In the meantime, official sources say, should you see the affected raid battles, we ask players not to participate. So they're even saying, even though we shut down the raid battles, if for some reason they pop up, don't play them. Just don't. Guys, this is an embarrassment. Utter embarrassment. Scarlet and Violet. And it pains me to say this. I actually enjoy Scarlet and Violet. I, it's the first that I've honestly enjoyed in over a decade. I, I've really fallen out of love with the mainline Pokemon franchise and have for some time. I don't think it's innovated enough. And then obviously Legends Arceus came along, loved the hell out of it, really ran pretty well. Yeah, it had its performance dip here and there, but not nearly the same as Scarlet and Violet. Didn't have any of the same bugs or glitches. And while the game maybe looks ugly at times because, you know, it's not a graphical showcase, it was good enough. And I it, it made me really excited for Scarlet and Violet. Then I played Scarlet and Violet. And while I didn't experience all of the given bugs that people have shared online or all of the performance dips that people did, I didn't fall through the world as much only happened to me once in my playthrough, it still happened. And the reality is that while I really enjoy the content that's in the game, the story that's in the game, how the story ends, I think is one of the best like mainline story endings in any of the Pokemon games. It is all tarnished by the fact that Nintendo had to put out a public apology about the performance issues of the game. They never do that because Nintendo never releases games in this state. The problem is this wasn't a Nintendo made game. Nintendo wasn't in charge of QA and all Nintendo did was publish and Nintendo as the publisher maybe could have put their foot down and said, no, this is too buggy to release, but they didn't because of course they are going to trust the Pokemon company who has been making them hand over fist money for decades. I think that this most recent issue with the terror raid battles, probably whatever issues crop them. Let's be honest, this won't be the last issue. They promised they would patch and fix the problems in Scarlet and Violet. They haven't done it. We have DLC announced that are supposed to come and be a big deal. Are we waiting for performance patches with that? I don't know. Are they just hoping a new system solves all the bugs? I don't know. I am at this point just feeling embarrassed. I, th this is one of the best selling games on Switch. It sold over 20 million units, might hit 30 million someday, right? It, it potentially could. I'm not saying it's going to, but it potentially could hit 30 million in sales someday. The next game Nintendo released immediately after in terms of being a mega seller was Tears of the Kingdom. And Tears of the Kingdom presents such a stark contrast. A.G. Anomu's own words. Hey, when we delayed the game back in March of 22, the game was done. Oh, so why'd you delay it? Why'd you spend an extra year on the game? We needed to polish the game and make sure that things didn't break. Do you think there's been any Pokemon game that's been given a year to polish? Heck, six months to polish. Probably not. And I understand that Game Freak, when you dig into the grander development of games, the Pokemon company, you know, could be holding a brux of the blame, but also Game Freak sort of sets their own development schedules. And I, I don't know if they're just unwilling to ask for more time or if once they set those schedules, the Pokemon company gets the ball rolling on everything else and then won't let them extend it. Because obviously there's always, hey, we think we can make this game in X amount of time, but then if you need more time, maybe the Pokemon company doesn't allow them to get Get that extra time even though game freak set their initial development schedule so i do think that something needs to happen with pokemon and i think this something could make pokemon into a mega seller we actually had this conversation briefly on live stream last night and i'm going to bring this idea forward to all of you and you guys let me know what you think pokemon needs its breath of the wild moment and what do i mean by that? i don't mean by going open world it did that right what i mean is it needs a game that gets let, 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 let's let's be generous or conservative a little bit let's not even say five six years Let's say they need a, a Pokemon game with the mainline team 
plus help. Let's go to a 200, 300, 400 person team. And you need to take, let's say four years to develop a Pokemon game. I'd prefer five. I'd like, I'd like you to make a brand new engine from the ground up for the game. But let's say you don't do that. And, and, and let's go with four years. I want the first three years to be spent building an absolutely amazing open world Pokemon experience, just like you were trying to do with Scarlet and Violet, but taking it to the next level. Then I want you to take the care in the final year that Zelda got, and Zelda got this with Breath of the Wild too, and just polish, polish, polish. I think if you fire back, and I know you don't want to wait until 2026, 2027, 2028 to release a new Pokemon game. Maybe you have another company work on remakes in between. But what I'm trying to say is if you did that, Pokemon, if you stopped trying to rush games out every few years and instead, instead took your time, I think you could see sales of the next Pokemon game that rival Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. You already have a massive starting base. Now imagine you have a super polished game that appeals to everyone who's ever touched Pokemon and might even bring in new players too. I think Pokemon can do what, what Zelda did. Like if you think about Breath of the Wild, so what, three times, three, three plus times more than any prior Zelda game ever did? Yeah, it did that. Imagine a Pokemon game selling two to three times more than any prior Pokemon game ever has. That is a possibility, a, a 50, 60 million seller is not out of the question for Pokemon if it was handled correctly. Now, does that make up for the sales that you could have got in between of releasing more games more frequently? Maybe not. I don't know. Clearly, the Pokemon strategy has worked well to make it one of the largest IPs in the world. I just think it can be even bigger. I think you could have a Grand Theft Auto situation on your hands here and yet be a single platform game. I think you could be the ultimate system seller. But that's just me. For now, we have what we have with Scarlet and Violet. To me, it's an absolute embarrassment of a game and I sincerely hope that the good that's in that game continues forward and Nintendo looks at Game Freak and the Pokemon company with their next game and goes we're not letting you release a game that reflects this negatively on us again it's not happening it makes the switch hardware look bad it makes just everything and then you choose the kingdom come out and it's like oh yeah no this this really was a development problem it had nothing to do like tears of the kingdom's doing so many more complex things in comparison to what that pokemon game does it can't even i mean can't can't even run at 30 fps let alone without all the glitches and bugs so i'm really sorry for those people that are you know we're looking forward to this terror raid event and any future ones and any other bugs you encounter i'm not saying pokemon scarlet are bad games again i like the content it's just really embarrassing that this this level of mega selling game is allowed to exist in the state that it's in and this is getting to cyberpunk 2077 levels of bad and yeah that was playable at launch too anyways guys you let me know what you think about this down in the comments below i just think pokemon can be done and deserves better Later, guys.